I played Fall Guys until I won a crown for all 5 of the game modes. Each mode consists of different ways to win like this one where you have to work together with your squad. And I had to win every single crown in all of them to achieve what I like to call the Fall Guys Gauntlet. Now for those of you who've played this game, it's not easy to win a crown especially when you have people doing this? Really? This is a casual game! By the end of the video, we'll see how long it takes me to complete this challenge and how many games and rounds I play and try not to lose my sanity. With that said, let's get right into the video. Alright, we officially started and our first game was DoorDash. Not too difficult as I just had to break some doors down. Since my brain was twice the size of any beanbag looking player in the lobby, I let the chicken in the front run ahead of me. That's right, little chicken. Do my bidding. And just like that, he was breaking the doors down for me until he got stuck so I moved on to the purple bean with tattoos to lead the way instead but that didn't last long because he got stuck as well we all know a true pro takes the yeet is to the finish line but i was no pro so i didn't look too good doing it at least i made it unlike the sumo guy next round was called slime climb and the objective was to get to the top before the slime got to you pretty confident with this map because i knew some shortcuts here and there but for some reason the odds were against me as i was denied by the sliding block the first time and the second time until eventually i got eliminated this game sucks. I started off much better on game 2 as you just had to ride the momentum of the wheels. Then there were these giant balls that didn't affect me too much as it usually crushed the other players before they got to me. After that from what seemed like an absolute war zone of fruits falling from the sky, I managed to get through without touching any of them. Dizzy heights, easy heights. Next round was full tilt where the platforms would lean a lot if you had too many people on one side. So long as I was at the front, I'd be smooth sailing. Except I was spawned in the very back so I had to run with the crowd. Thankfully people ran on both ends of the platform platform to balance it out, just enough so I didn't fall to my death. The rest of the obstacles were a breeze and I even did an epic 180 evasive maneuver to dodge the jelly bean poles and followed it up with an emote cause I felt like a boss. You're just jealous bro. This map was without a doubt one of my favorite maps cause running through the speed boost was so fun. I got off to a good start but my brain shut off for a second and I crashed straight into the hammer. I tried my best to get back in the race but that didn't matter cause I got absolutely denied by the hammer again. Just when I thought there was a glimmer of hope and was inches away from qualifying, it just wasn't enough. But hey, third round, getting closer huh? Well, this is easy enough. I know how to count. New splash, it wasn't it. I was inches away from getting eliminated. Clearly. I was missing the point. Oh, there are numbers on the screens. I definitely made this one look harder than it should have been. Oh no, not slime climb. The trauma I got from this map was enough to call it quits and move on to game 3. But I was no quitter and so I faced it head on and no matter what happens, I was never giving up. Yeah, no more shortcuts. You know what they say, third time's the charm. And what better way to start by messing up right in the beginning. In what universe did I think I could make this jump? What? <laughs> I even wound up for it. But out of nowhere, I awakened my inner gamer by doing this crazy inhuman jump that clearly impressed this furry over here. Maybe a bit too impressed because he started chasing me. Man, this guy is obsessed. <laughs> Moving on from that, I was presented with Freezy Peak. I started by narrowly dodging this first obstacle, followed by landing away from the flinging tiles to not get flown away like the guy just now. Then it was just a matter of taking my time with the rest. I even got first place because I took my time and played it safe. The stars were starting to align as we were heading into round 3 but then that feeling was short lived as I was met with an RNG based map. I tested the waters by jumping on one of the tiles and my luck was not there as the tile disappeared into thin air. I tried the next one and surely enough that was a fake tile as well. Then I changed my strat and just followed the crowd and somehow it worked but I barely qualified. I couldn't believe my eyes as I was just one round away from making it to the finals. Despite spawning in the middle, I tried to not let it bother me. I beautifully dodged the first three hurls with sheer confidence but got caught by the rotating pole. It made no sense because I was positive I jumped over the pole. Look, look at it I tell you. <sighs> game is so bugged. As you can see, many things factor into winning a crown and it wasn't without my fair share of mistakes. After mistakes, upon mistakes, that made me realize how hard this challenge was going to be. But I pressed on and started getting better, smarter, and even luckier. 
I meant to do that. And so my knowledge and ability for the game improved by an astronomical height. At this point, I felt more confident than ever knowing that I've probably played this map a thousand times. My start was amazing as I leaped through the lily pads like it was second nature. I proceeded to walk down the slide but then got blocked by the inflatable toad and fell to the second floor. But that didn't stop me from marching on as I easily passed through the rhinos like I was invisible to them. So far so good. Next round was Whirly Wigs and I'm not gonna lie, this map was probably one of the easiest ones to qualify. At first I let the rotating poles launch me forward hoping to get ahead of the pack. But jumping was safer so I did that instead. Then I took the speed boost from the treadmill to dive over the ledge. Now I would take the side route 9 out of 10 times for this part. But I felt lucky so I went for the middle this time and successfully fit right through the fence like butter. And that led me to qualify. As I saw that luck was on my side, I felt pretty good moving on to round 3. Until it was the map that completely shut me down from making it to the finals. No bugs this time, please. I got flashbacks of what had happened before and prayed the glitch would leave me alone this time. I passed the first hurdle, the second, the third. Then came the rotating pole that once clipped my wings in making it to the finals. I mustered up everything I had in this one jump and, and, and. Wait, what? Hold up, that was the easiest jump of my life. Why did I fuss over it so much? Alright, one more and we move on to the finals. Yes, fruit shoot, I can do this. For this one, I just had to play it safe and be mindful of where the fruits will land. What a start to the round as the two guys behind me took a banana to the face and shielded me from falling behind. My heroes. Thanks to their valiant sacrifices, I did my best to move up as quickly as possible. Fruits were falling left and right, but I made sure to anticipate every one of them. I even squeezed through two of them like I was in an Indiana Jones movie. And with a final dive, I was able to qualify. Do my eyes deceive me? We're in the finals, but we still haven't won that juicy crown, so I couldn't let my guard down just yet. Nine contestants, one crown. Who was going to win it all? The round started and everyone dashed towards the middle. I squeezed through the spinning wall, but so did everyone trailing behind. Jumping in zero gravity didn't give you an advantage, so I just ran. This guy with the dark onesie was pretty good as we were basically on equal footing, but that didn't last long as he got pummeled by the spinning mallets while I went super saiyan and dodged every single obstacle that was in my way. I almost tripped, but caught myself and weaved through this next one. It's so close, I could almost taste it but the timing of the crowd moving was off and i had to wait while this guy cut me off and he choked and i won i felt like the world was in the palm of my hands and it only took me two hours 34 minutes and 50 seconds <laughs> <laughs> All right, one down, four more to go. One thing I realized playing with a squad was now I didn't have to carry my own weight and instead blame it on my teammates. Yay! Surely they'll carry me and yeah, never mind. While my teammates were struggling, I was cruising through the map. But then I fell and found this secret pass that didn't really lead anywhere. Then I fell again and the same thing happened. Why is this even a thing? It doesn't do anything. Meanwhile, one of my teammates qualified, so that's good. And then I qualified only to find out our two teammates didn't make it in time, so we were disqualified. Hmm, quite the beginning we have here. All right, well, surely this time we'll get the dub. I mean, look at my teammate. He's dripped out. Oh, wait. um, Don't mind me. I'm, I'm just uh, giving my teammates the spotlight. After that piss poor start, I pulled myself together and got into a groove, slowly catching up to my disco friend. Then I saw my whole squad ahead of me, which made me feel really proud. We were basically guaranteed to qualify if I didn't stop messing up so much. All right, now I'm just being silly. Third place, not bad at all. Now we got ourselves a squad. Since I didn't do too well last round, I felt inclined to redeem myself to the team. And boy, did I show them by not messing up a single time jumping over the wall. And to top it off, I took the Yiddish to show my teammates I can be skilled and stylish at the same time. Having my teammates watch my dominant performance, even without a chat feature, I'm sure it went something like this. You guys are too kind. Our team's morale was at an all-time high and we were ready to win it all. But the hype quickly turned into despair as it was fall ball. This was going to put our teamwork to the ultimate test. Despite my desperate attempt to keep the ball away from the goal, the yellow team scored the first goal. But it was still 1-0 so I kept on defending as I let the blue team score a goal. Tension was high as everyone was doing everything in their power to score. And what do you know, the boxing glove on our side betrayed us by scoring for the yellow team. 10 seconds remain and our futile attempts to score comes to an end as the yellow team wins 2-1. I bet my teammates fare well and queued for the next game hoping to meet my next roster of all-stars. My instincts tell me this team's gonna take me far. Then I took back what I said because I was ahead of all my teammates. Seeing how well I was doing, I had to carry the team. But the giant fan blasted me off to another dimension which humbled me just a bit. Wait what? When did that guy get ahead of me? I guess my team's pretty good after all. Except for Viper Ning over here who was lucky to have us. Not a bad start for a randomly assembled comp. Like really random. 
Hey, aren't you the sumo guy from the first game? Anyway, moving on to round two, we had team tail tag. I started off without a tail, so I scoured my surroundings in search of my prey. I locked onto the first person I saw, which was this fella. But then I lost him and immediately changed my target to this guy, which paid off because I got his tail. But then I ran like my life depended on it, only to lose it to the yellow team. But I yanked it back and hopped onto a treadmill to escape. Things got out of hand as we had the red team steal my tail, followed by another steal from yellow and then by me again. And what do you know, the blue team wanted to join in on the fun and steal my tail. I lost my tail, but instead of panicking, I waited for a chance to strike. My patience paid off as one of the red team straight up gave me his tail. Then one of the blue team came out of nowhere to take my tail, but I juked him hard and got away safely. Thank god we didn't go into overtime. Of all the maps we could have gotten, we get this one? It was definitely one of my least favorite ones because I felt like a rat trapped in an anaconda's cave. I said it was three giant rhinos that won't rest until you're utterly destroyed. My teammates and I did what any other all-star team would do and it was to spread out. That's a class A team for you, they get me so well. And with our five head strategy, we outlasted most of the squad and qualify for first place. One round away from the finals and what better way to do it than slime climb, my worst map. Wait, what am I doing? Am I AFK? Of all the times I could be AFK doing god knows what, it had to be right now? I don't deserve you guys. Just when I thought all hope was lost, Viper Ning steps up to the occasion. I couldn't believe what I was seeing as Ning took a Yeetus to the finish line. And not just Ning, but my entire crew made it. That's when I knew that we had ourselves a dream team. Our last round was Blast Bowl, where you basically throw little bombs that detonate after a couple of seconds and the last one standing wins the game. I had a bad start when I threw a ball and almost got Ning out in the process. But along the way I discovered this one trick where if you hold a ball close to someone they get blown away and I didn't. With my genius method I used it against one of the enemies and surely enough I got him out. I tried to execute my tactic on the others but this guy caught me and held my bomb in which it flew up and back down almost eliminating me. Still I kept this up because it was genuinely a great strategy and without me realizing it I turned around and saw that my teammates and I were the only ones standing. This was my second time queuing for squad shows and I had already won my second crown, which only took me 30 minutes this time. 3 hours in and I felt unstoppable. The next hurdle I had to face was duos, which was still not as bad as solos, but definitely a challenge compared to squad. At this point, I was proficient enough at the game to carry anyone I'd be matched with, or so I thought. Turns out when your partner doesn't even qualify for the majority of your games, it's darn near impossible to qualify. You can't even hear me slam my spacebar as I quit out of the game. For some matches, I didn't even have a partner which was the biggest handicap you can have for this game mode. There would even be guys who would just intentionally throw the game just to show off. Qualify already, please! And when I occasionally got partnered with an awesome teammate, I played terribly. Cause when you have someone so reliable as a teammate, you tend to forget that you also need to play well to win or something. Look, I don't know the science behind it, I just knew I was hard stuck playing duos for a while. Thankfully, by the grace of god, I was blessed with a partner who was cracked at the game while I played decent enough to not drag him down. Well. Sometimes. With all that said, because our second round was slime climb, half of the lobby got wiped out, boosting my partner and I straight to the finals. This was huge because I could possibly win my third crown right here and now. But then I laughed hysterically as I saw that it was jump showdown. Now going back to all my previous finals, I have never once won a single time in this map. Every time I try to time my jumps, I just somehow end up either messing up or someone grabs me to mess me up. As per usual, because this was my worst map, I died super early on. But my knight in shining armor came in clutch by grief the heck out of everyone and we won the elegance the precision maybe one day i'll be able to bully a 10 year old so that they can never win a game ever again <laughs> but in all seriousness i was inspired by how my partner single-handedly won purely through his skills alone watching him lit a fire in me that i carried over to the next game mode which was fan favorites now this mode did not include any team-based maps like tail tags fall ball hoopsie daisy and many more which was perfect for a guy like me who was now on his own it was basically solo mode without ever having to worry about a potential loss playing with total strangers online. What's more, you only had to qualify for two games before competing in the final. Despite my ultimate goal was to win a crown for every mode, I set a mini goal to challenge myself even further. And that goal was to win at least one game of Jump Showdown to prove myself I can win without any help from anybody. It was like God himself heard my plea as every time I made it to the finals, it was Jump Showdown. I've had several chances to win, but to no avail, I failed miserably every single time. Until this one game where the win was literally handed to me. It was my fourth crown win and I even achieved my mini goal of winning a game in Jump Showdown. I was one away from finally completing this challenge. Then it hit me. Was I really happy with how the finals went down? Was I truly worthy of this win? I remembered how my partner had wiped the floor with his opponents, which was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And like a child expecting a PS10 for Christmas, I wanted that too. And with that, I queued up for the last game mode, which was Jump Around. This mode had everything I needed to make my sub goal of winning in style a reality. The maps were all literally jump close, which was a great warm up for leading up to the finale. I easily qualified for every round, and in my first try, I made it to the final. Count countless hours I 
had gone into the game for me to get to this point and I was ready to lay it all down once and for all. I began the round by standing on one of the rotating beams to assert my dominance. Then I moved away from everyone to find a safe area not to get grabbed early on. While I was looking away, this group of long heads ran towards my way only to give me a fright. In my previous game, staying on the far right meant that you had more room to backpedal, so I quickly ran over to the right side to stay on top of the competition. Then the platform on my right began to shake, signaling for a fall. I knew that only two platforms would remain near the end, which meant I had to ditch the one I was currently standing on. So I instantly dove to the left with more space to increase my chances of survival. A few minutes passed and there were still so many of us left, but because of how cramped we were, people began to fall one by one. We were down to six, then five, then four. And when I least expected it, this long head grabs me and I get hit by the beam, which knocked me back to what seemed like the end of the road for me. But I just couldn't let it end this way. Not like this. I pressed my spacebar like my life depended on it. And somehow I miraculously managed to stay alive and get back in the game. And then karma avenges me as the dinosaur grabs the long head, causing a chain reaction and eliminating the gladiator as well. Only the two of us remained and it was down to the wire. My only chance of winning was to play aggressively. I grabbed him, but he was not phased. Then I grabbed him again and he got hit by the beam. With that, I thought I won, but out of nowhere, he narrowly escapes his death and recovers. My heart was pounding as it was anyone's game at this point. Just when I thought I exhausted all my options, I saw a window of opportunity where the two beams were about to align. Without a second thought, I immediately jumped through and I couldn't believe it. I won! I finally did it! I hope I did you proud, partner. And with that, I had successfully completed the challenge of getting a crown for every game mode, plus winning an epic game match in one of my worst final maps. By the end of the challenge, I played over 135 rounds and 47 games, most of which were played in solo mode since I was painfully bad in the beginning. Also, it took me just over 6 hours to complete it without a single break in between. Yeah, by the time I finished, my bladder was the size of a watermelon. And the food I ate after tasted like it was made by a 3 Michelin star chef. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and be sure to subscribe because this video took me a long time to edit and i'll be pumping out a lot more content for the future you can also comment down below to give your two cents for future video ideas and who knows maybe i'll use them that's all for now thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next one see ya